Hey guys, so I decided to start working on a game again and I figured Windward would be a, a good choice for a game to resurrect. Even uh, more than a year after I started uh, stopped working on it, I see people playing it daily, multiplayer, single player. So there seems to be an interest there and it's good, but um, the best part about it is I actually have all the assets for it already, like all the art, all the music, it's all done. The things that I don't have are the code, per se, because I developed the game around what other people actually wanted me to do, which was not really that great of an idea, to be honest with you. Because I had uh, an idea of what it is I actually wanted in the game, and then there was uh, there were people actually tell me what they wanted in the game, and the two were not exactly uh, in sync. I was doing my best to actually uh, please the players rather than my own vision, which turned out to be a bad idea because it ultimately led to me losing interest in the game itself. And while players were not necessarily wrong per se in requesting the features that they did. I would say that uh, the features that I wanted to add that I actually never got to add would have been uh, more important, like procedurally generated worlds, a cooperative gameplay where you actually start with uh, a friend of yours in a world that is completely yours and you just play with that friend, you know, Terraria style. So with that in mind, I figured Windward would actually be a good choice of a game to start over. And I do mean actually start over, rather than uh, reuse the code that I had there. Now, of course, as some of you may know, I'm a developer, which means that coding is actually easy for me. It's everything else that is difficult, like art, for example. Unfortunately, since I have art for Windward, and I have music for it already, and uh, I have a pretty good idea of what I want, it should work out pretty well. So anyway, where am I going with all this? Well, I figured with me working on development, it would actually make sense for me to make progress videos as I go along. And in those videos, I actually explain what I did, how I did that, what uh, difficulties I've encountered, and how I resolved them, or worked around them. And so, here's the first one. So, as I've mentioned, I started from scratch pretty much. And by pretty much, I mean I actually used the multiplayer game starter kit and GUI, of course, the fog of war, and some test assets. Oh, and a TNET for multiplayer, of course. So, uh, the multiplayer game starter kit actually give, gave me access to the helicopter, tank, and uh, generic vehicle class. So, I could fly around already with a helicopter. Or I can actually drive around in a tank. But I've decided to expand it a bit. The first thing I did actually just before going on vacation is uh, create a car instead. So, so I'm just using the same exact uh, base vehicle class and extend some things there. And, uh, just created a basic car. So, uh, same thing. I can drive around. There's some basic suspension going on. As I drive around, it tilts based on physics. It's all physics driven. So, I figured, well, where can I take this further? Obviously, the one thing that's missing is the support for ships, right? Because Windward is a ship game. And so I started thinking, well, uh, in Windward itself, I was actually using uh, all kinds of hacks to uh, make it possible to drive our ships around and make them collide with things and uh, whatnot. And I figured it would actually be interesting to go a full physics route instead. Of course, it's kind of complicated to say the least, because there's uh, buoyancy effects and uh, well, a lot of stuff to consider. 
but uh, as I was working on the car I figured hmm the way the car drives is actually fairly similar to how a boat works if I was to replace this plane right here with water the, and actually then I would uh, get rid of the wheels then it wouldn't be too big of a stretch uh, to jump from car to a boat well a ship and that's exactly essentially what I did well let me show you the final result first so here I have a ship and I can drive around as I actually turn it tilts correctly and this is all done using physics and there are no hacks involved all fully physics driven now I can actually add wind effects quite easily by making it sway just applying forces on a ship itself and of course I can actually collide with other ships and you can see it reacts properly and begins swaying with the collision and everything it looks a lot more realistic I can push them around properly and of course if I had a bigger ship and I collided with a smaller ship that had a smaller mass I would be able to drag the smaller ship along as you would expect of course here I have a sort of a shore and I can actually beach myself on the shore by running into it and if that happens well now I can't move very well anymore because the front is now stuck on the shore so how did I do that so anyway here's the explanation of how it's done here you can actually see the ship itself and you may notice the round things they're actually wheels so I have the four wheels on the sides which actually make it possible to drive the ship and then I have a pair of smaller wheels further out tilted which are not touching the ground until you start turning let me show you so as you're uh, driving around and turn the side wheel actually ends up touching the water which is what makes it uh, impossible to flip the ship as you're making a sharp turns and it also makes it uh, possible to have these uh, soft buoyancy effects see how it pushes the ship backwards it's all just done using the physics of the wheels themselves but how is it actually possible to drive around and collide with ships and get beached on shore without making it possible to just drive off the shore well it's actually easier than you might think all I did is I just modified the physics collision matrix and this probably should not be checked so what I essentially did is uh, made it possible for the ship's wheels to collide only with the water plane which is the flat one and uh, then I got the ship's lower part and upper part they can actually collide with other things so if you look at the actual ship itself you'll see that there are colliders here which are actually set to the ship's lower layer which is set to collide with things like the terrain the other ships and so on and so forth meanwhile when I have the wheels here they are on the ship's wheels layer which is only set to collide with the water so as long as the wheels are touching the water it is possible for the ship to move but as soon as the wheels leave the water by you know, running onto the shore the wheels no longer uh, contact with the water and difficult uh, and the movement actually becomes a lot more difficult it's nice to actually do everything using physics because it gives you expected results so for example if I was to hit play and actually disable the wheels altogether look what happens the ship visibly sinks now this happens because the ship itself 
has a round collider on the bottom and then there are like box colliders everywhere else so as soon as the wheels are disabled the round thing hits the water and starts tilting over I also made it uh, so that when the ship is actually uh, at 90 degrees or more it uh, ends up uh, gaining a lot of angular drag which slows down its movement as if it its sails actually got caught in the water here let me show you it in action again so the angular drag uh, begins at a very small valley and there's like nothing uh, on a drag then I hit the wheels and BAM look what happens to the angular drag that's how it slows down of course I can take it one step further and instead of having the colliders uh, collide with the water in this case they would collide with some fake object that I would create right under the ship uh, and then I can actually lower this object gradually into the water making it appear that the ship is actually sinking and now for the oddities now here I actually have a helicopter right and actually drive it around a bit and it looks okay but if I happen to be turning like that you see what happens see how jittery it is so even though a helicopter is actually moving forward correctly there is definitely some jitteriness going on when I'm actually turning it's the same thing with a tank so if I have a tank and start turning around the same thing the jittery kind of movement meanwhile the actual movement seems to be fine it's only the rotation that's bizarre now the way I actually move it is uh, like so I just add a relative force to the helicopter that's what actually moves it drives it forward keeps it afloat and it seems to work fine to turn it I just add the relative torque and yet this seems to be jittery now this is done in fixed update and um, I do have the rigid body to interpolate right here so it's not like it's not using any interpolation and the camera target is actually smoothly following the object so let's see what happens here yeah follow smoothly but when I actually start rotating it becomes visibly jittery for some reason if I don't uh, do any smooth interpolation it's better on the body but now the top jitters anyway some weird stuff is going on if you guys have done this uh, stuff in the past and uh, have any suggestions for me um, how to get around it I would appreciate it in the past I've actually been uh, doing all kinds of hacks like um, separating the rigid body from the render and then having the render lag behind the rigid body and it's all fine I mean it works it's giving me smoother results than this but uh, uh, when the rigid bodies actually collide with things it's not as uh, responsive as it can be so like a ship uh, in the car for example if I was to jump off and you see how it uh, bounced up and down this is not going to be visible very well anyway I figure this is actually decent enough for the first video and it's certainly long enough if you guys have any uh, suggestions or questions regarding what I've done and want me to go into more detail feel free to ask other than that, have a good night.